and I'm here with Pastor Rich out of Sacramento, California. And uh, Pastor, how long have you uh, been a pastor? Approximately 11 years. Is that when you first got saved, is that what you thought you were going to be doing? No, not at all. How was it that you came to the Lord? Well, I think the important thing to know is that I was, I was raised in Christianity. I was raised in the Church of God. And uh, growing up in Arizona, I had kind of had my own way I wanted to do things. I didn't really follow what God called me to do. I knew of Jesus, but I didn't know exactly what Jesus could do for me. And so I, I did my thing and just kind of living life and going to church every Sunday. But it wasn't until I was probably about uh, 13 or 14 years old that I really took my relationship with Jesus Christ seriously. And I surrendered in the altars of a youth camp. And uh, that, that week that we were, we were in camp, I actually, after surrendering, was filled with the Holy Spirit later on throughout that week and God just began to drastically change my life and, and that's that's when I truly surrendered to, to God and I gave him my all. That's when I came, that's when I came to Christ about 14 years old. One day, accept God into your heart, said this in his prayer that all of a sudden they don't have any more problems. Is that what you've experienced? Absolutely not. Like I said, I accepted Christ at 13 or 14 years old. That doesn't mean I live for him every day after that. You experience problems. You're going to experience problems. There's nothing you can do to get away from those problems because we live in a sinful wor world. And so in that, I, I experienced that over and over and over again of sliding away from God, doing the things that I wanted to do or the things that my friends wanted me to do. And it just kind of, it, it becomes a downward spiral. There's, you know, it, there's nothing you can do, but as soon as you take your focus off of Jesus, that's what happens. You begin this downward spiral. You need to stay as close as you can and focus to him, on Him in order to stay that way. And through my teen years, I was on and off with Jesus Christ. I knew who Jesus Christ was. I knew what He could do in me, but I didn't want to commit because I didn't want to accept the calling that He had on me. And so things begin to change in my life, yes, but I never gave God 100% of me. And even into my marriage, when I, when I accepted my wife, I, I wasn't 100% committed to Jesus Christ. So I didn't give him 100% of myself or my all. And my wife continually prayed for me. She knew the calling that was on my life. And the things that I was doing, they were wrong. I knew it. She knew it. But she didn't judge me. She just prayed for me. And through that prayer, things began to happen in me. I knew that God had called me to be a youth pastor. However, that's not what I wanted to do. I never wanted to be a part of, of any ministry where I preached because I didn't feel like that's what God had called me to. It's not what I wanted. I kept using the I word. And when you're with the, in a relationship with Jesus, there is no I in we. And so I had to let it be Him before it would happen. And as my wife continued to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, I began to get softer and softer. And I'd go to church with my family and I rededicated my life to God. And when I did that and I gave everything to Him is when ministry opportunities begin to open and, and I took my relationship with God serious and I went and I got my license and it, things began to happen because God had a calling on me and it began to change things. And in that change is where it began to happen. And, and as I grew in Him and He began to excite the things that were going on inside of me, I watched my family get closer together, and we begin to mesh as a family, and that's when I got called to come into the ministry full time. Started in children's, I did that for two years, and then got put in youth ministry, and uh, I've been here ever since. Uh, you said earlier that you were um, a youth pastor, and um, I know that the youth uh, suicide is, is on the rise, um, uh, kids are, are cutting themselves, there's abortions to deal with, uh, there's just a, a slew of things that um, the younger generation has to deal with that we didn't necessarily have to deal with on the same scale. Um, wh what do you tell your youth that are going through those things? I tell them basically 
there's always a way out. There's, there's not, there's nothing that is too big for God is the main thing. And if you're cutting yourself, you don't need to do that. There are people that love you for just who you are. And there's people in this church, there's people in churches across America that love you for just who you are. You don't have to do that to prove anything. You don't have to do that. If there's an inside hurt, there's an inside healer. And you need to know that. And that healer is Jesus Christ. And I tell them on, on a constant basis because we deal with that. Suicide is not the way out because that is an ultimate ending. It's over. Once that happens, that's it. You are in eternity for the rest of eternity. Eternity is unending. And that ending you do not want. That is hell. And so I tell them, don't commit suicide. Let's commit life. Let's figure out who Jesus Christ is. Let's learn this together. And we lead them through steps of salvation so that they can come and they can, de they can, they can develop a relationship with Jesus Christ and grow in it. I want to give uh, anyone who's watching an opportunity right now and ask Pastor Rich if he could lead us in what we call the sinner's prayer. What that is, is um, if you're at the point in your life where you're tired of being hurt and, and, and you're tired of the situation that you're in, um, we encourage you to, to give your heart to God. And, and all it requires is John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's whoever. It doesn't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're educated, if you're not, if you're young or old or pretty. He says whoever. Um, you're that whoever. And all, all it takes is for you to believe in it. It's best for you to believe in it. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. And God, tonight, those that are listening that want to accept you as their Lord and Savior, Father, and if you would, repeat after me as we pray this prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart. God's going to come in there and he's going to change it. So pray this with me. Father, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. I know that you died on a cross for me. And I accept that. And I accept that. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Change me. Change me. And make me whole. And make me whole. Teach me. Teach me. What a relationship is. What a relationship is. With you. With you. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And change my life. And change my life. From the inside out. From the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.